Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone that rule well, and blessings to the hopeful elect out there teaching this word in all sincerity and truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And, um, you know, pretty much what I wanted to do in this lesson. Is talk about you know setting aside things that are outside of the bounds of our control, which ultimately is everything. You know, and why do I say ultimately it's everything? I say this because although the scripture says that we have a more sure word of prophecy, which the word prophesy means to say before. The actual transition between major prophecies, like as we sit here right now and we breathe the common air, leading up to the time of the hour of temptation, the mark of the beast, which is the chip, we don't know exactly play by play how exactly that's going to play out. So why worry about it? And this is exactly why I'm going to open up with the scripture, um, which states this. Okay, just bear with me a second. Oh man. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. And it reads, Let go from the mortal thoughts and cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste to flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. But the point is, let go of the mortal thoughts. You know, get your mind out of the gutter. As we are encouraged in the Holy Scriptures to set our affections on the things above rather than the things of the earth. Doesn't this make more sense now? Doesn't it make sense for us to, you know, literally set aside the mortal thoughts and lay hold on the, on the thoughts of immortality? Because that's what awaits the children of Israel in the future. And that is a more sure word of prophecy right there. That's something that is never going to be changed. That's something that the Heavenly Father promised his people. Who are the Israelites? We're about to enter a time where our mortal bodies are going to be changed into immortal bodies, just like the scripture says. And that is a more sure word of prophecy. Okay? So, knowing that we have a more sure word of prophecy, what sense would it make to dwell on the inconsistent ramblings of men and demons and thoughts of the mortal men or the mortal man? It doesn't make any sense. And this is why I read that scripture. Let go. Second Ezra 14 and 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts and cast away the burdens of man. Put off that weak nature. Furthermore, you know that man's goings are of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. How can a man then understand his own way? That's a question. How can you understand your own way? If man's goings are of the Lord, you don't, even you don't even control your own steps. You don't control what's going to happen to you day by day, play by play, blow for blow. When you wake up in the morning to when you, rest, you rest your head on a pillow at night, you don't control that. The only thing that we are to trust in is the more sure word of prophecy, which is always consistent. Prophecy means to say before, and that's something that's going to happen Regardless of what man thinks. And this is why the scoffers and scorners to come up against this word is actually futile because they can't stop the flow of this truth. They can't stop that which is actually consistent with the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Romans 3 and 3 says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yahweh without effect? And the answer is no. 
Their unbelief is not going to stop the consistent inevitable flow of the more sure word of prophecy that we have in these last days. And you know something, man? We have Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to praise for that because a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. So the very fact that we've woken up to this truth and we know what's going to happen in the future, in the end, although we don't know what's going to happen day by day, blow by blow, play for play, we still know ultimately what's going to happen in the end is the will of the Most High. And it's been written down in scripture. The, the Heavenly Father has given us a tip off for the future. And this is what the secret ingredient the prophets have. They have a secret ingredient called faith mixed with the word. And this doesn't profit everybody because they don't have the gift of faith. Hebrews 4 and 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So if you don't have the gift of faith, which it ultimately faith is a gift. Ephesians 2 and 8, right? But even the gift of faith doesn't even belong in the grasp of your power. You had that one geezer in the book of Acts that wanted to try and buy the Holy Spirit. Okay, in fact, let's get that scripture. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly where it is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to Google it. Okay, I'm going to Google it and see. Yep, Acts 8, Acts chapter 8 verse 18. Uh, and I pray this is making sense, by the way. You know, I just, um, as I was sitting here, you know, I was just watching a few videos and it just made me think about a few things, man. You know, just, you know, the grand scheme or the grand scale of things and how things are playing out on the earth. You know, what we're really supposed to be tied into right now is a more sure word of prophecy. Because that is the one thing that we can really, really bank on is the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All the other stuff, all the fluff and puff in between, it's all man's thoughts and, 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 and demons. And, you know, because we are fighting a spiritual warfare, like the scripture says in Ephesians 6 and 12. We are in the flesh. We are in these mortal weak bodies. But the scripture says, put off the weak nature. And this is why we're in the fashion of setting our affections on the things above rather than the things of the earth. This is Acts chapter 18, verse, Acts uh, chapter 8, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through, the, that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. So this individual, he peeped that the Spirit was working with Peter in them. So he thought that he could try and uh, scam the Holy Spirit. He could try and rig the game. He could try and pretty much bribe his way into being spiritual. Well, in fact, no, you can't do that. Nobody can do that. And this is what makes this so special is the fact that the scriptures speak about the broad way that leadeth to destruction. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to die of gruesome deaths. But the ones of the elect are stated to be, that are stated to be saved, whose name, names are written in the book of life, they are already predestined for salvation. Even that is out of our hands. The movie and the script has already been written by the ultimate director. So why are we laying a hold on mortal thoughts? Why don't we let go of these mortal thoughts? Things that we can't control. And actually hope and just beg and hope that in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, he shows mercy upon us in these last days. Because that is what the Lord is going to do for his elect. And that has been written. And that is never going to change. So let's keep on reading right here, right? Verse 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift, the gift, listen to that, the gift of Yahweh may be purchased with money. That's why the scripture says in Jeremiah 9 and 23, I believe, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, or the mighty man glory in his might, nor the rich man glory in his riches. But let him glory, if, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. This is the reason why we are really reaching out, you know, um, to something that can't be seen by mortal eyes, man. And this is the why, this is the reason why our people come up against us and they hate us for it. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. 
Hosea 4 and 6 says what? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Okay? So I read again, Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in Right? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Faith being the gift. And what is the definition of faith? Let's get Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is, Arkia. And you few sisters that are listening, learning, hoping and believing in the end that we are going to be shown mercy by Yahweh Shai when he comes back. And that we are going to be saved from our enemies. Now, the fact remains that the elect are definitely going to be saved. The elect of the nation of Israel are definitely going to be saved by Yahweh Shai from their enemies. But who that actually is, whether we know if it's us or not, that still remains a mystery. But the scripture says, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. And this is why we go so hard through the spirit, which is really not us that's going hard. It's a spirit that's on us. To do this, to, to connect, to try and connect with our power source as much as possible in these last days, knowing that the be all and the end all has already been written and we're just waiting for it to play out. As we hasten the day. Okay? So it's futile, man. It's futile to have a, you know, a, 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 you know approach this truth with a mindset of, a, of, of the flesh. Because the scriptures clearly tell us in John 6 and 63... It is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, man. That's why the mortal thoughts, they got to take a back seat when it comes to dealing with the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because, yeah, prophecies, are, major prophecies are stated. Like when the scripture says, for example, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. The servants of the Lord, we know that they're going to eat. Do we know how it's going to play out, though? And this is the point that I'm trying to make. This is the point that we're trying to make. This is why we let it go. We're, we're coming to a time where we need to connect with our power source so much to the point where we just trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for even the next breath of air that we take in our lungs. Being that we're in such a dark time period on the earth where the wicked is, is, is pretty much going all out in these last days because they know that they have a short time. Revelation 12 and 12. So what's sent? And you know, this man, he's going to threaten the flesh. He's coming up against our flesh. And this is why we got to tap into the spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And this is why the scriptures speak about wisdom and knowledge. Let's get Isaiah 33 and 6. Okay. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. This wisdom and knowledge that we have is the only thing. Right? This belief, this faith mixed with this word right here is the only thing that's going to keep us stable in these times. Okay? This is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. This is the secret place of the Most High. And the scripture tell us in Amos 3 and 7, surely the Most High will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets, man. And what do the prophets do? They prophesy. The word prophesy means to say before. We know what's going to happen before it's actually happening, man. As we set our affections on the things above, as we wait, patiently wait, as the scriptures say, patiently in your patience possess you your souls. As we patiently wait for these major prophecies to play out, we know exactly what's going to happen in the end. The chip's going to get pushed. They're going to set up them chipping stations. Esau is going to come down with great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. They're going to try and establish that new world order. They're going to get it up off the ground for a certain amount of time. But when he's about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. Exactly how that's going to happen leading up to that, we don't know. But we know that that's going to happen. That the chip is going to be pushed. Just like the prophet John stated in the book of Revelation 13. And that no man might buy or sell. This man is going to really put, play comfy of flesh to the point where you ain't going to be able to buy and sell, man. Okay? And this is why wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Because we know ultimately, faith being mixed with the word, what's going to happen to this man in the end. It's futile. Even his own devil, right, is unraveling prophecy as he's setting up his plans and he's laying his traps and his snares for, for, for the uh, children of Israel to receive the mark of the beast. Okay? 
But they didn't bank on the fact that prophecy reigns supreme and there's nothing that they can do to upset prophecy. This is why Gamaliel said in Acts the fifth, uh, fifth chapter and the 38th verse. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. Yeah, why? Because that's of mortal thoughts. That's the mortal thoughts right there. That's that carnal mindset. That's that giving into the flesh rather than the spirit, man. Okay, thinking that this work is of men. This work that we're doing is not of men. The words that we're speaking are not even our words. We're moved through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is the Heavenly Father's movie that we're seeing play out before our, our eyes, scene by scene. And there's no one that can rewrite this script. Are you crazy, bro? Man's goings are of the Lord. We just read that scripture, man. The fuck do you think you're dealing with here, bro? We have a more short word of prophecy. Right? Now check this out. But if this... But if it be of Yahweh, right, if this work, right, this counsel of this work be of the Most High Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found even to fight against the Most High. And that's why the scripture says, all that hate me love death. Because when you really come up against this truth, you come up against this word, you're really loving, you're making a covenant with death. You really love death because you're really going against the Heavenly Father's sure word of prophecy. Now you're playing with fire. Okay, and the scripture says every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Judgment is a sure thing that's going to happen. Okay, remember the prophet Habakkuk said, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Who do you think you're fooling, man? There ain't no one that can stop the vision which is for an appointed time. When the Heavenly Father sets an appointment for a prophecy to play out on the earth, that is what's going to fucking go down. And there ain't no one that can stop it. The gates of hell cannot prevail against this word, bro. So the message is, Arkham, sit tight, buckle up, man. Because yeah, much tribulation to enter into the kingdom. We don't know how it's going to... Every minute detail how it's going to play out play by play. But we know that we have a more sure word of prophecy. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. And that's Yahweh Shai, the day star rising in our hearts, man. And the word prophesy means to say before, we got the testimony of Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy. So lay hold on that. Set your affection on the things above. Yahweh Shai is going to crack these clouds and no one ain't stopping that from happening. There's prophecies that have been written down thousands of years ago that have played out already on the earth. Thousands of years ago written down that are still waiting to be played out on the earth. And we are in that time period, man. Where the Lord is about to introduce a time on this earth like no other since there was a nation. It's a very exciting time indeed. But we got a more sure word of prophecy to go with it. Hey, the Heavenly Father is merciful, man. Even giving us the gift of faith mixed with this word. You can't tell me that the Lord he, he, the Lord has left us out here high and dry. He said, look, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. So we got that, bro. We got this word. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that I get and get understanding. Because what's contained within, the, within wisdom is what? Prophecy, bro. And I pray this, 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 this lesson is making sense. I really do. I sincerely hope it's making sense. Because I was just sitting here thinking about some stuff. Okay. And I'm just like... Uh, let me read you this. Sirach 18 and 1. He that liveth forever have created all things in general. <laughs> all right. Hey, look, the Lord's got this, bro. The blueprints have already been laid the fuck down. The elect have already been predestined before the foundation of the world to be saved. It's not possible to deceive the very elect. That's in Matthew 24. All we have to do is fight the good fight of faith. Which even that, that's given to us to do. The Lord only is righteous and there is none other but he who governeth the world with the palm of his hand and all things obey his will. 
for he is the king of all and by his power dividing holy things from among them from from dividing holy things among them from profane point point being all things obey the will of the heavenly father man there ain't nothing that's going down on the earth that's outside of his grasp. As the scriptures say, the Lord's hand is not slack or short that he cannot save. Let me get that scripture. Okay. We're in a time where the Lord is going to require that faith, man. Okay. The Lord is, hey, as it is written, without faith it is impossible to please him. Excuse me, bear with me. So this is Isaiah, I think this is the one, Isaiah 59. Look at this, Isaiah 59 and 1. Behold, the Lord, Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither his, his ear heavy that he cannot hear. And remember, man, hey, when we make them prayers to, to Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai, guess what, man? Them prayers, they pierce the clouds. Okay, so we have to have faith. The Lord is requiring that we have that faith, man. Okay. Let me see if we can get that. So Rock 35 and 17, the prayer of the humble pierce of the clouds. Until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and he will not depart till the Most High shall be hold to judge righteously and execute judgment. So guess what, man? Hey, just know that you... Even the act of praying in general, that shows humility in itself. Even you facing the east, getting on your knees, man, and praying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you come into the Lord in a humble mindset, man. Okay? And you best believe that those words are going to pierce the clouds. The Lord, hey, remember Yahweh Shai told us, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him also will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven, man. Know that the Lord hears us, man. Okay? The prayer of the humble pierceth the clouds, Arkim. The Lord is governing the world with the palm of his hand. Let aside, you know, let go of thee the mortal thoughts. Don't worry about the the in you know the intricacy details of what's gonna go down on the Tuesday in 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 in, in, in three months' time or this and that. Listen, man, we hasten the day to when look the elements being on fire shall melt with a fervent heat. We want this place done. But even our wants and what we want to happen now, that's with the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Things have to play the fuck out, man. But how merciful is it that the, the Lord has given us a more sure word of prophecy in general, man? So just flow with it. Like I want to use the analogy of, you know, you might, let's say you jumped into a rapid stream. All right. And you just being taken by the current and you, you bouncing off a rock over here. You bouncing off a, a, a tree stump over there. Hey, we going with we going with the flow on this. Now we don't know exactly how bumpy it's gonna be from what day, to, you know, from a Monday to the to so a so called Monday to a Wednesday to a, through to a Saturday, whatever. You might hit a, a rock, you know. You might you might you know you might get carried to to the left of the stream one minute, then to bash your head off the the you know off a tree trunk on the right side of the stream the next. The point is, we just gotta keep going with the flow. This word is like an onto water, right? The Lord said, he that believeth on me as the scripture I've said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we got to flow with this living water. We got to flow with it, man. That's in John 7 and 38. We got to flow with this living water. And guess what? It's about to get hella turbulent out here. But what does that mean? Do we then cower down and do we give ourselves over to the mortal thoughts, the thoughts of the flesh? Or do we just soldier up, man? No man that warreth, right? Let me go ahead and get you this scripture. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 74. Let me start from 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. We are about to be tried. The Lord is going to put that heat. 
to us. That's the turbulent tribulation, the hour of temptation. Revelation 3.10. We're going to be tempted, bro. Heat is going to get applied to us. But the Lord said this, Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. Yes, they are at hand. Yeah, you are going to get scraped up, bumped up and bruised. Yeah, you are. Some of us are even going to have to lose our own lives believing in this truth. Lose our heads being in this truth. But the Lord said, look, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be you not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai is your guide. The Lord said, don't be afraid. Okay, the nature of the current, let the Lord deal with that. Let the Lord deal with the nature of the current. Let the Lord take you with the flow of the current. But just don't go under. Okay. Yeah, you might, you know, you, you might, you, you know, you might, you might dip for a couple of seconds and come up short of breath after you hit your head off a rock and you going down. You know what I mean? Hey, a righteous man falleth, but get it back up. Just don't stay on them, man. This is about staying afloat. And this is why we got to earnestly contend for the faith. All right. Which even that is given to us as the Lord governeth the world with the palm of his hands. A man can receive nothing except to be given him from the Heavenly Father, right? The scripture says, I know that the way of man is not. In fact, let's get this close out on that scripture. Okay. Man, don't make no, no sense. Not in himself. No sense worrying about things that you just can't control. There's no, there's no uh, sense in doing that. All right, or should, should I say we? All right, given that this scripture exists, Jer uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, O Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. O Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. So we're literally at the mercy of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. So look, cast your burdens upon the Lord. The Lord knows what we're dealing with, man. And the scripture said that the Lord is not, you know, um, let me see if I can get that scripture. Um, you know, with the blue letter, you got to get it right on the money with the, uh, the wording. So it's not like Google where it would just, here we go. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. They have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yahweh is faithful. Okay? And, and, and ultimately, think about Yahweh Shai, man. Think about how he submitted himself to the will of the Heavenly Father, man. You see that? Think about the sufferings of Yahweh Shai and what he and what he did. And now where is he? He's on the right hand side of the throne, man, of Yahweh. So cast your burdens, just like Yahweh Shai casted his burdens upon the Heavenly Father, man. You know, we cast our burdens upon Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. We're following the lamb whithersoever he goeth, man. Didn't the Lord say, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. We're following Yahweh Shai, man. Going with the flow. Okay. It says, but the Most High is faithful, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, right? Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. The Lord's got this, bro. Why worry if the Lord... Now, if you believe in this scripture right here, this, this particular verse right here, why worry about the particulars? Okay. Now, yes. Is there going to be times where you do get a scrape here and, and you, you know, you do give into mortal thoughts? Yes, that's going to happen. But don't stay drowning in those mortal thoughts. Okay. At some point, man, the faith has got to kick the fuck in. You know, at some point, hey, all our faith is going to be tested in the end. And I pray and I hope, I just hope that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai gives me the, you know, the ability to be able to withstand in the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's all we have, hope. And we give that diligence to make that calling and election sure. The Lord wants to see us fight a spiritual warfare, man. Let's keep reading. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The Lord's going to make us a way to be able to bear whatever 
we have to go through. Because guess what? He read it like that. He read the script for you to be able to bear it, bro. And that was outside of your control. So what the sense does it make laying a hold of the mortal thoughts? Wouldn't it make more sense to let go of it? Easier said than done. We know this, bro. We are in the flesh. And this is why this is the ultimate test that's about to come our way, man. Not knowing where your next bite to eat is going to come from and so on and so forth. The particulars. But just going with the flow, trusting in the Lord and casting your burdens upon him. That's what he wants to see us do in these last days. Like the scripture says, if thou faint in a day of adversity, thy strength is small, man. Just pray and ask the Lord. There's a scripture that just came to my mind, man. Um, <laughs> this is... um. Ah, where is it? The sparrow. Sanction. Excuse me, bear with me, man. Um. Damn, where is that scripture? I'm gonna have to pull it up because I I really want to read this, man. I'm gonna have to pull this one up. Right, Matthew chapter 10, verse 29. Let's see if, if, if that's the one. Matthew chapter 10, verse 29. I don't know why that wasn't... Maybe I just didn't get the wording precisely right. Uh, Matthew 10. Um, is it Matthew chapter 10, verse 29? Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. All right, this is Matthew chapter 10, verse um, 28. And fear not them which can kill the body, which kill the body, but, not, but are not able to kill the soul. And, and ultimately, we know through this word, we know exactly where we go after we die. Shall we not return to the father of spirits and live, right? Come on, bro. You're dealing with the father of spirits, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We're about to appear, appear before the judgment seat. When you die, you repair before the judgment seat, man. You know? So what sense would it would it be to fear Esau? To fear his plans and his traps? No, you fear the king of terrors. Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and, not, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs on your head, of your head, are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. And a sparrow is a tiny bird, man. Okay, and we're of more value than many sparrows. Okay, let's look up a sparrow. This is a sparrow right here. That's a sparrow, Arkham. And we're of more value than many sparrows, man. And a sparrow, a small bird like this, don't fall to the ground, except the Heavenly Father sanctions it. A, a small bird like that. Imagine that. And there's many sparrows flying around on the earth. In, soaring through the skies. Okay. But the Lord said. Fear ye therefore. Fear, fear ye not therefore. For ye are of more value than many sparrows. Alright. So that's just a little message that I wanted to leave you with today man. Lord willing it was edifying and uplifting. Just let go of the mortal thoughts man. Man's goings are of the Lord. The script has been written. The elect have been predestined to receive salvation. Who that is, we'll find out in the end. Then, as it is written, then shall it be known who are my chosen. Double honours to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and shalom to the hopeful elect.